Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Canvas Workspace tutorial, I'm going to show you how to weld fonts. After I show you how to weld fonts, we will head on over to our Brother Scan and Cut, where I will show you how to cut out this font using vinyl, and then how to personalize a new crafty item that my friend just gave me. So you're going to get to see what I do with this vinyl. So you're going to get to learn how to personalize with vinyl. Let's get started. So I'm going to, I'm using the Canvas Workspace for the PC version. I'm going to go to the help menu about Canvas Workspace. I'm using version 2.4.0. Go ahead and link in the description for the place to download this. And I don't want to get into all of this right now, but there are two versions of Canvas Workspace. If you're using your web browser right now, you're not going to, and you're using that version of Canvas Workspace, the online or cloud-based version, you're not going to be able to access the fonts on your computer, and you need to download this version. But I'm assuming that you're one of my students from my courses or one of my crafty friends that already know how to download fonts, so we're just going to jump right into this using this version. But I will go back at the end and show you how I downloaded this font because I don't want to make any assumptions. But I do want to get started for those that are just like, hey, show me, show me, show me. Jump right in. All right, so here we are. I'm going to click on the text tool, and I'm going to go up to this font. And I'm going to use what's called Nora Dia or Nora, Nora Dilla. Okay, I'm not even sure how you're supposed to pronounce the actual name of this font, but I use this font all the time. Um, I'm going to use it because it's a script font. And I'm going to zoom on in first so you can really see this. A script font means that it's like a cursive font and it's better for welding. If you were to use a different kind of font for welding, then you might have to move the letters together. But a script font is already, I'm going to go ahead and write the word papered because I'm going to be welding papered chef to personalize my little item. A script font is already, the letters are already overlapping. So it's perfect for welding. So now I'm going to, while the cursor, you see how the cursor is blinking? Don't leave your text box. If you leave this text box, I mean, if you if you click away, sometimes you have trouble welding. I just make sure I'm still within the text box, and then I go to Edit, Process Overlap Weld. Okay, now I'm good. now I can zoom in more to show you that, and show you when it looks like unwelded. Okay, so that's how it, it looks. It, it's all welded together. Now, if you don't do this, it's an absolute nightmare to try to work with vinyl if the letters of your cursive word, or any, any word for that matter, are not connected. If the letters are not connected, it's very hard to work with this. So let's let's do a couple more things. Um, well, let's do this. Let's go up to, I'm just going to type the word again, papered. So you can see it's papered. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. See how... You see how the letters, the, where the lines are, I have to really zoom in here. Like this letter A, how it stops there, this would cut out as one letter, and then the P would cut out as one letter, and a little part of the A would be cutting into the P. It would just be an absolute nightmare. So you don't want to, you don't want to work with letters that are individual. You want to weld them together so you have this beautiful shape. So now let's go ahead and delete that. Now, okay, so as I mentioned, I like this font. Now, if you're going to weld another word, you would type the you would type the next word separately. So we're going to go ahead and type chef. But before I do that, I'd like to show you in the layers panel something that's important about welding. You, you have text layers and you have, in this case, a shape layer. Once you weld something, it becomes a shape, meaning this, this word here has become a shape. I can no longer edit the word paper. And if I spelled it wrong, I have to start over because it's a shape. It's now one big shape. I can't, it's not text. It's not editable. I can't change the text. All right, so let's go ahead and do the word chef. I'm going to type chef, C-H-E-F, because I'm doing paper chef. See how I would get four letters cut out. I want to weld that together. Now, of course, it's not going to weld the letter C, which is okay. I don't need to weld the letter C. That's the way the font was. It's it's not it's not meant to touch the, the, the H. If I want to touch the H, I can. I can move it over and touch the H, but I'd have to type the letter C separately. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Process Overlap, and Weld. All right, so that's that's how I want it. Now, I need to know where to put that. Maybe 
I could probably put it like that. Now, what I need to do is make a little guide for, so my friend, she made me, her name's Masako, and she sewed me this really cute, like, plastic purse, like a little purse bag for my crafts. So I'm going to, I measured the front of it. I'm going to go ahead and put a shape. I'm going to draw a shape. And let me zoom back out. I want to make a guide because I don't know how big to make this paper chef. I, I'm just hoping it fits, and it probably will. So let's see. I'm going to put this rectangle there. Or it's a square, but I'm going to go up to. Oh, by the way, I'm not even sure. I don't, before I move on, I want to I want to type the word chef and just point out that text layer versus. See, before I move on to the shape, see how this was a text layer, the chef before you weld it, and then it turns into a shape layer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that in the layers panel because that was the point. I sometimes get ahead of myself. Edit, process, overlap, weld. And you see how it turned into a shape layer. Okay, I can delete that. I just wanted to make sure I, I wanted to point that out before I moved on. All right, back to the shape. So go up to go up to the edit menu. And with the shape, I'm going to make it the shape that I need, that I'm able to work with. So my shape is four and a quarter. Let's uncheck maintain aspect ratio. Four and a four, so 4.25. That's how much space I have to work with for my text. And I have 3 and 3.75, 3 and 3 quarters. All right, so that's about, I mean, that's good. That'll actually fit on my, on my um, plastic bag. So I, but I can also, if I want to, like, I got to move that to the back. So I'm just going to take that shape and move it to the back. So now... It's, in fact, I can even color it in for you so you can see what I did. I, I just, what I did is I put it in the back as a guide. It's just a guide, right? That's all that is. And I, I moved it to the back. So now I could see if I want to, let's see. You can use the actual over here if you want. You can use the actual edit panel. But I find it sometimes easier just to sort of resize them. I can make the E's be the same size if I want to make sure they're exactly in proportion. I can make sure like this E is the same size as that E. But sometimes it's just easier for me to eyeball something when I resize it based on the size rectangle I have to work with. But yeah, there the, the two E's on top of each other should be. There we go. It's just, it's just making sure. Because you can't actually just, when you're working with fonts, you can't actually change the height. And think that would work because the height <laughs> is depends on the types of letters that are in this font. Meaning if you have like tall letters like the F, it would be a higher. But I, I'm just trying to eyeball it is what I like to do. That's how I'd like to do my layouts. So there's my layout. Now when I send this to the machine, I just want to make sure that the pampered and the chef are centered. So I'm going to get rid of that now. I don't need that. I don't need this box anymore. So when I send it to the machine, I don't want to cut that square. That was just my guide. But I'm going to take these two items, papered and chef, and go up to the edit menu again. And I'm just going to align those to the center in relation to each other. Okay, so that means that the chef is aligned underneath the papered. Another option is to align them to the left, but I don't think that looks right for this little cute purse that I'm trying to. I mean, you want to align them some kind of way. This is, this is aligning to the right, it, you, but just align them somehow. Don't. Doing it this way, where it was just sort of randomly over here like that, it wasn't aligned either left or center, making it hard on the eyes. So I did to align it to center. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and group those items, just so I don't accidentally move them in relation to each other. So I selected them both with my mouse, and I right-click and I can click group. Or I could have just went up to the layers and group, the layers panel group. You can see that they're grouped here inside the layers panel. So I could have went up to the layers menu as well. All right, so I have everything I need now. Um, I'll, like we'll get we'll get back to this font later and how to get the font and and how to find other fonts and hopefully it'll still be Black Friday. I mean, hopefully I've been very very busy, but I really would love to you to be able to take advantage of specials on this website because there's like so many amazing things right now going on. But I can't do that right now. We're gonna just go to the machine and cut it, and then we'll get back to this website at the end. All right, so we're gonna we have papered chef. We have, we're ready to send this to the machine. First, save your file. Okay, save as. Let's see. 
I'm just going to say um, plastic plastic purse. You you, don't, you can call it whatever you want. This is my this is my plastic purse. Meaning I'm per, I personalize lots of things. So right now that's what I'm personalizing. So paper chef is there. Now I'm going to I save my file. I'm going to go to export transfer FCM file. I'm going to transfer FCM file via the internet. And next I'm going to see you on my machine where I will cut this out in vinyl for my little bag. Thank you. Crafty friends, we're back. We're going to retrieve the file that we just created in Canvas Workspace. I'm using the STX125. So you will retrieve the file here, but if you're using a CM model, you're going to be retrieving the file up near the top where it, it says like retrieve from cloud. There's a different kind of icon. And I've shown that on my channel many times as well. Retrieve data. And we're going to retrieve it from Canvas Workspace. That's the second icon because that's where we saved it from. But you could have saved it on a USB stick or you could transfer it via the cable. Or this is if you want to retrieve it from the memory in your machine. We're retrieving it from Canvas Workspace. That's the second icon. And there's Paper Chef. Okay, now I'm going to use what's called Holographic Vinyl. So hold on to your horses because you're going to... This is might blind you, okay, when I when I put this in front of the camera right now. This holographic vinyl. No, it's not going to blind you. I would never do that to my crafty friends. But see, this is holographic vinyl. So what I'm going to do is I think... I'm going to experiment, you know. I'm going to cut one out now, but if it doesn't look right, then I'll change it up. It doesn't matter. Or maybe I'll personalize something else. But I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm going to use the lighter one because here's my bag that my friend made me. And we'll get a better view of this in a minute. So I'm thinking... You know this this one matches and it'll be but they won't contrast so i'm thinking maybe this lighter color of holographic vinyl and i have a 12 by 12 sheet so i can just go ahead and put that on the mat but if i didn't if i had a smaller sheet of vinyl and i normally would cut a smaller sheet of vinyl out but since i have a 12 by 12 i'm just going to put it on the mat i could if i did have a smaller sheet of vinyl and i wanted to make sure it fit i would use this background scan button to make sure that the vinyl piece is, is actually lining up behind my paper chef I'm just, there's no certain reason I'm cutting it in the middle. Like I could cut this anywhere right now. So maybe to waste less paper, I would cut it over here. So I could just go ahead and cut it over there. It doesn't really matter where I cut this. Um, never cut too close to the edge. Just, that's just the tip. Never, never cut anything too close to the edge. Just my, my personal experience. Okay, so what you might, you might want to do a couple things. Like when you're cutting vinyl, one thing I like to do is take out the auto blade before I cut vinyl. This is my personal preference. And there is... See, look at just, did you see that? Something just totally fell out. Here, that's a good thing I opened it up and I did not plan this at all. See, I was cutting something earlier and this just totally fell out of my blade holder. So I had paper stuck in there, so that was a bad thing. I My blade might not be sharp, so I'm going to go ahead and sharpen my blade. Because this is, I use a ball of foil. I've talked about cleaning your blade holder, sharpening your blade many times. It's, it's on this channel. I better put my spring back on there. See, my spring came off. So my, my blade holder was dirty. I should have cleaned that even better. Okay, I'm going to just sharpen my blade a little because when you cut vinyl, it's good to sharpen your blade. But they do make vinyl blades. I just haven't bought that accessory yet. There's a vinyl a vinyl type of blade. I'm pretty sure it's a vinyl blade, but I, I don't know what. I, I did recently see something. Anyway, I didn't get that accessory yet. So I'm just going with the regular blade I have that came with the machine. Anyway, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Cut. Now, I'm going to use vinyl. So what I need to do is I need to go into my settings, so I need to go here, and I need to uh, usually lower the speed. I'm going to lower the speed because I'm cutting vinyl, and leave the pressure as it is, and half cut. And very important is that you turn half cut on. Half cut on is going to give you a kiss cut, meaning it's going to only cut through the top of the vinyl, but not through the backing of the vinyl itself. So let's get this other piece. I don't want to... It's like, whoa, it's very bright. See, it's, I don't want to cut through the backing. I only want to cut through the top layer. So I'm going to use half cut on. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to, and again, lower your speed if you want, but it definitely, it doesn't matter. The speed doesn't matter as much as the half cut. The half cut has to be on. I lower speed because the, the more detailed a cut is, right, the more detailed you're cutting out, the slower your speed. So it doesn't think, you know, so that you're, blade doesn't get all caught up inside there. Okay, it's going to take two minutes. We'll see you in two minutes. Okay, it's finished cutting. 
we say okay and let's do this let's go here I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit and tilt down so I basically would just say I would basically just say here unload the mat okay but I want to show you that the, it didn't really cut out that great because you know the, the, the more detailed your your vinyl is the more that's the bigger you want to make those letters but I couldn't because of the thing I'm trying to personalize it came out pretty good but the, a little bit of the C got cut off but it doesn't matter I mean I can make another one later so what you want to do is you want to cut off okay you want to take your scissors and you want to cut off the piece of vinyl okay and then you're going to weed out it's easier to weed out so you could take your weeding tools and they they sell weeding tools I'll try to link to some weeding tools there's just so much, I mean, so much you can do with this kind of concept. But I, I basically just weed with a pair of tweezers. My friend Christine gave me these awesome tweezers. I forget. Let's see, if I can't even, I don't know who makes these. But anyway, there's there's weeding tools that you need. Little, little like pointy tools or tweezers to get rid of all the insides of the letters. So you want to weed that out before you pull out the background, before you pull off the back of your letters. Whoa. I want to get rid of this mat. I don't need this mat anymore. It's just, this mat is in my way. Okay. <laughs> so you want to do, you want to take out the inside of all the letters. And then I just, I use these little insides of the letters to clean up my craft room. Okay, so let me just, let me go ahead and weed this out. I don't want to make you wait. It'll take me a minute to weed this out. And then I'll be right back with taking the background off. Okay, I weeded out the vinyl, then you're gonna pull the background off and you're gonna end up with some of it lifted up, which is no problem. Save this little piece, this is a piece of sticker. Save this for like either you can punch out little shapes if you still kept the backing on, or I just sort of clean up my craft room with it. Clean up the vinyl, I mean not the vinyl, the glitter. Just clean up the glitter with it. Finish weeding, any pieces that still got stuck there. And a couple times it wanted to take these letters with it and I had to make sure I held the letters down when I did this. And I have my little, you know, my little brother's scan and cut spatula handy. So that helps. This little piece is just totally stuck on it. So now I got this and now I'm happy with that. So what I wanna do next is I wanna use what's called transfer tape. So uh, this is, this is, I use Cricut transfer tape. It's just a brand. Let's see, I need a bigger piece. I. I Transfer tape is reusable, but I need a bigger piece in this case. I want to I want to transfer the whole thing together. So you cut a little piece off of it. So they sell transfer tape in many stores, but if you are going to buy it online, using my using the link, yeah, you know, that help, that helps support my channel. So if you want to use the links inside of the description of this video, that's great. If not, you I know you're probably off typing it in right now, not even paying attention to the video. You're off shopping for things. But I, I please request that you use the links in the description because it doesn't cost you anything else to use the links in the description when you buy something. It's just the same as you going to search for it. And I will give you links to all the products I use. So there's the transfer tape. I just put that on there. And then, again, it's reusable. I'm just going to use my little spatula. And I'm going to use the spatula to get that to stick to the transfer tape. And now when I peel the transfer tape away, we'll see what happens. See, the vinyl stays on the transfer tape. Okay, and I said it did a pretty good job. I said like, it's when you have a, see how the little A got cut off a little bit. I need to maybe flip him around. The little A is flipped around a little bit. You know what though? I can just cut off the tip of the A. No big deal. I mean, I'm keeping it real here, folks. This is what happens. Sometimes when you work with such a fine, fine font, you, it's better to use a bigger, a bigger design. So yeah, I just got rid of that little tip of the A. It's no problem. Now the rest of the word will stick. Oh, I'm very happy with this. I'm personalizing my cute little bag. All right, so here's my bag from my friend, Masako. She sews, so she made this little bag. It's, she said it's not totally waterproof, but it's water resistant, meaning she knows I like to go in near the water a lot to keep my little gadgets in. Okay, so I just wanna make sure the zipper, that I'm on the right side, okay? And I am, obviously. Okay, so there's the little bag. Now I'm going to put this on here and I'm just going to lay it on there 
And now I use your spatula again. Use a spatula again when you use your transfer tape. This goes for anything. It doesn't matter if it's a cup, a bag. I mean, any, when you're sewing, of course, you use a different kind of vinyl. You'd use the, you would be doing iron-ons and things like that. And of course, in, there's, other, there's other tricks and tips for iron-ons. But for in this case, I'm just using what's called adhesive vinyl. And adhesive vinyl is what I use for mugs and things. So let's see if it stays on that. Perfect. Perfect. See that? So when I peel the transfer tape off, my letters stay behind. And then I give it another rub. Not too much with the spatula because this is holographic vinyl. It, so I don't want to really rub necessarily with my spatula and, and sort of scratch my holographic part. But maybe I'll just rub it a little bit with my hands just to make sure. Yeah, I don't really need to use my spatula because it's already perfect. Oh, I'm so happy with this cute little bag and it's now personalized and I can put my little crafty gadgets in it. My scissors actually have a little tip to, um, you know, keep them from poking through the bag. I actually have a little, t or a little cover for my scissors, but there's my little, put your little scan and cut tools in there. My little weeding tool. My stylus for my, well, I don't take that away from my scoreboard, my stylus, but you know what I'm saying. It fits cute little crafty gadgets in there. I always have a piece of foil <laughs> when I'm when I'm sharpening my blade. So that's how to do it. All right, so let's get back to the software. I'm going to import this video into my software. So that when you when you hear the sound going a little bit, it's because my software doesn't do a great job with sound, the software where I import this into. But I wanted to show you back in Canvas Workspace or back on the screen recording how to find this font and how to find other fonts as well. Okay, so I'll meet you back at my computer in a minute. Well, I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks on how to weld fonts in Canvas Workspace and then how to personalize an item using your brother's scan and cut. So now I want to show you where I got the font. Okay, so now I'm back on my computer. I'm just going to go to Google where I have the page open. And it is still Black Friday deals. See, there's some deals going on on the site. This I try to use free fonts in my tutorials and in my courses that I teach, but I do want to show you that there are just the sky's the limit on this site and, and all the things you can find on it. So again, I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing this right. Don't laugh at me, but Nora Dilla, Nora Dia. Okay, it's just a great script font. Okay, so I'm going to be linking to that. And then there's all these Black Friday deals and promos. And when you go into the different fonts today, a lot of them that are normally $14 are only like here, like a dollar. A lot of, um, they don't just have fonts. They have SVGs on this website. Like, like here, I'll just go to this one here. The new Christmas font, which is normally $13, is only $1.30 today for Black Friday. And this money goes to support the authors, the creators. Now they agree to this promotion, meaning they take a very, very big cut during Black Friday in order to make a collective, like hundreds of people design here. And then in order to make a collective sale, they agree to being part of this promotion and they get very, very little commission, but they do a lot of work. A lot of creative energy goes into developing these fonts and SVGs. So if you want to support them and get some fonts, there's little, you know, little links here. Little, I mean, sorry, thumbnails thumbnails to show you to preview what the font will look like and there's svgs on the site and then there's also specials for the all access pass here sign up for the all access pass first month only one dollar okay so there's different black friday promo deals i'm glad that i made it here before black friday was over so that you could see those deals okay now speaking of deals i also have scan and cut courses the last course i created was canvas workspace course and it's it delves deeper into using SVGs from the internet and fonts and how to install them. And I also developed courses on working with fonts. So I will link to this page on my personal blog because these coupons are still good until Saturday, November 28th at 1 p.m. After that time, I don't have any more Canvas Workspace coupons, but I may be able to put some coupons on here for working with fonts. It's just that I've reached my limit on how many coupons I can create for the month. So these go on until November 28th, 1 p.m. Eastern, $9.99 or $10.99 for all of my Canvas Workspace courses. And you can watch previews of what you learn in all the different courses. 
on th the link I'll give you. Okay, I'll also link to the vinyl, the, the transfer tape, and all that stuff. Because I know you're probably in a shopping mood. I know I am. It's holidays coming up, so you never know. Let's get some fun stuff to use for your projects. Well, thank you for watching. This is The Papered Chef.